Oh yes, this is the Hardcore Marketing Show. I'm Casey Cheshire, your host for this epic journey. Today's show is sponsored by Ringmaster on a mission to launch B2B podcasts that create relationships, generate revenue, and drive growth. Ringmasterlive.com. Bam. Yes, the time has come. I have hit record. And my guest today, oh, there's so much to tell you. I have, I have prepared for this guest today. And Casey, you do not prepare. What are you doing? I'm prepared. I've prepared. I have two energy drinks at once that have been poured into the same cup. And I have uh, multiple other items here on the desk with me to prepare for the speaker, to prepare for this guest. Who is he, though? Who is he? Let me get right to it. He is a freaking badass in all things marketing. He's a slayer of the mundane, Google's number one, number one rebranding expert, liberator of awesome, and we all know awesome is where it's at, advisor to CEOs, author of Amazon's best-selling brand book, Brand Intervention, which has been responsible for over $3 billion in sales. If you haven't read that, well, oh, I'm getting $7 billion, God, $7 billion in sales. The number keeps growing. Chief Gravity to Fire at DBD International. David Breyer, welcome, sir. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate the introduction. And I'm glad that you drank. I'm glad that you drank two energy drinks because I hate I hate drinking something like that's like people ask me, why do I drink like a triple shot espresso? Because I want to give the I want to give the coffee a chance to catch up. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah. You want that to catch up. So I I asked the team, you know, to prepare for this conversation. Should I drink this one or this one? And a shout out to Tom who said, drink them both. So I made them drink them with me. So in the other room, there's a few people going off the wall. But right now, we're going to be going off the wall here. I can't wait to get to this. Can't wait to talk about brand, all these secrets, the ways that people have gotten to billions of dollars worth of sales through doing this the right way. So I'm going to hand you this. It's heavy for me, but I know you work out. Ugh. Okay. All right. Here you go. You got it? Can you, can you grab that from way over there? You got it? All right. Thor's Absolutely. hammer. Yeah. Take for th me Thor's hammer. Smash some kind of marketing myth, bogus strategy, misconception. Set the record straight once and for all. Good. So probably the most prevalent misconception is that now, and, and this applies whether you're a solo entrepreneur. If you're a solo entrepreneur, it has to do with your knowledge and your wisdom. And if you're a business that offers a service or a product, it has to do with that service or product. Thinking that your service or product or your knowledge or wisdom is what matters and will, what will actually be the only factor that determines whether or not you are successful. That is complete and utter bullshit. Because the bottom line is, is every day of the week, there are inferior salespeople who outperform superior salespeople. There are inferior customer per, customer service people that outperform superior customer service people. There are inferior service organizations that outperform superior ones and there are inferior products every day of the week that outperform superior products. How and why is that? The answer to that is a four letter word, branding. That's right, four letter word. It's the new math. The, yeah, this is a new math I can wrap my head around other than that one that I got at home from my kids homework last night that makes absolutely no sense. But I can I can figure this. So so wh but why are we thinking that? Why are we thinking it's our own knowledge, our own expertise? Why are we thinking it's something other than brand? Why does it get the shaft? Well, 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 here's the deal. It's like, let, let's see, what is it? What does an MBA go to school for to be to be, a, 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 you know, a business administrator? His his smarts are what matters. That's why he shows you all those wonderful diplomas. And he thinks his resume means something as those three letters, the end of their LinkedIn profile. Yeah, exactly. I mean, first of all, who the hell even looks at a resume today? People look at what people have done. What what impact? What have you been a catalyst to to result in X, Y, Z outcome? And so, you know, or I mean, and in my case, I'll be I'll be very specific. So I went, you know, I I have been my entire life. I've been an artist. I've been a painter. I I've delved in many forms of art. Right there, for those of that are actually seeing this, you can see where my finger is. That painting of George Harrison. I did that when I was 16 years old. No kidding. And so and so the thing is, is that I so to me it was like, well, my art, my talent. That's what was going to take me the whole way. Um, and so and then when I went to college and started to hone my skills in terms of design and such like that, what did I focus on? I focused on that. Did anyone teach me? Oh, by the way, 
you're going to need to know how to negotiate. No, they did not. By the, they say, hey, by the way, you're going to have you're going to have to excel in customer service. Did they teach me that? No, they did not. Did they teach me how to plan out a project? No, they did not. Did they teach me how to exceed expectations? No, they did not. Did they teach me how to appreciate the power and the nuance and impact of language? No, they did not. So all of these various things. So so you know you want to get to where we learned this. We learned it. Well, focus on this thing. This is this is your this is your vocation. This is your thing that you're going to do. That's going to provide value. Bullshit. If you don't, you it doesn't even take into account. They don't teach us. Unfortunately, they don't teach us to learn to think for ourselves. They don't teach us to learn how to. How do you unravel and unwrap a problem, deconstruct it so you can put it back together the way it should have been done? And what are the variables that that absolutely crush and suck the life out of the potential of a project or a product or a service versus the ones? So they don't teach us to actually evaluate what's important, what's unimportant. So I mean, to me, a lot of it comes down to how we've been, where we've been trained to put our attention because we thought that's all that mattered. You teach a you you talk to a lawyer. What's what's he? Well, my my lawyering skills. You know. Fine. Oh, an accountant, my accounting skills, um, an actor and actress, my acting skills, you know, so you just, you just keep going down the line. What have we been taught? We've been taught that that thing was the thing that made us valuable. No, that's an, in, that's, you know, that if we fail to show up consistently, that talent is useless. Mm -hmm. If we don't know how to unravel it, if we don't know how to look at all of the other great talented me too's that are next to us who are offering similar things, if we don't know how to look and assess that and determine how am I going to stand out amongst all that noise? We're shot. We're sunk. Man, there's always someone too that, that knows more than you and someone that knows less than you. But even that being said, we're not being taught how to differentiate ourselves. And you know, it's probably not some evil ploy, like someone behind the curtain, just not teaching people we're learning from just don't know. They, they probably think that's what separates them. You know, the educators and whoever, they're probably thinking the same exact thing. And so we're sort of propagating a myth in an ecosystem yeah. where we're all just trying to get better skilled. And it's not, it's frustrating though, to be, maybe you're the best and you get outshined by, you know, that other, like you mentioned, the sales rep or someone else who lesser skills, but they are just, they're progressing, they're shining because of this brand. I so mean, why, why are, why yeah. are we being taught the answers? See, that's to me is the failure. Why are we being taught the answers? Why aren't we being taught the questions to ask? That's the quote right there, man. That's the mic drop. That right, right. that right there. Just end it. If you don't, if you don't use that as a little snippet, I'm come. I'm finding you. I'm, <laughs> I'm finding your little Thor thing. I'm, I'm plummeting. I'm plummeting. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna investigate for random earwax that's missing. Using that device. Anything coming out? <laughs> Joey, save me. Producers, help me. <laughs> no, but, but you're right, though. That is the thing where you were not being taught that it, and, and you need to discover the answer. So help help me discover the answer here. If it is not the skills and all these other things work so hard to practice on, what is it? You said it's brand. But what, what is that? What is brand? Well, all right. Well, let's, well, let, let, I always like to get down to like the bare, 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 bare essentials that, so people know where to start. First yeah. of all, a, a, a brand can, can't be arrogant or naive enough to think, well, I'm, I am great. I, I built it. Therefore they will come. That's, that is bullshit, utter bullshit. So the thing is, is look, I believe in greatness. I really do. And I believe in ex exceptional talent. I believe in, ex in exceptional things, but I also am highly aware of the things that can unmock and undo those, that brilliance. Why do we have starving artists? Why do we have failed, brilliant entrepreneurs? Why do we have incredibly talented fill in the blank, whatever they are, craftspeople, artisans, innovators, um, disruptors, fill in the blank, but, 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 but why do we have failed ones? Why, why are the, why are there ones that are doing something very similar to them that are crushing it? So to me, it's a matter of, you have to have an awareness of the microcosm, which is yourself and the macrocosm, which is the world. And if you don't have that dual awareness, you will fail. You will absolutely fail. You must have a dual awareness. Awareness now, of what? 
aware of well, aware, well look look i'm i'm aware i'm aware that there are other people who who say they do branding you know 85 percent of them suck they're they're completely full of shit it's smoke and mirrors and it's bullshit they don't know what the hell they're doing i literally saw someone who wrote an article two weeks ago saying and and, and I, I i will leave the name of the publication out because it's a publication that i have an affiliation with and usually they're very good and solid on solid ground but this well-respected, really well-respected public. What does it rhyme with? <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so the thing is, is, is the headline was something along the line, like I am a brand expert and there's like, you know, and there's like too much, there's too much branding or something like that. Or here's how to, here's what, what, when, when to not invest in branding, something like that. Right. Oh. It brand, it has brand expert at the top. And I'm going brand expert. And I read this, I read this article. I was very curious. And he literally, this person literally says, I don't even know if it was a he or she. The person literally says, um, don't do the branding stuff first, you know, start doing, start doing stuff and start just, Oh no, I know what it was. They said, do, do some like basic, simple, functional stuff you know pick a shape pick a font be simple blah 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 blah. i mean really really stupid stuff and they're just talking about design 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 no no message points and then and then start getting out there and then figure out what your business is figure out what your value is figure out who your audience is mm. like wait a second like wing it that before you ever freaking bring take out the pencil to paper you how the hell are you going to design something so this person this brand expert is saying something that is utter crap and bullshit utter bullshit it's laughable so i and, see and wh why is it laughable like why is it so bullshit because you well, because, well, well, it's, well it's simple let me ask you this it's like you're telling me you're going to design something you're going to put on it's 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 like this it's like it's just, it's the same reason it's bullshit that if i that if i said hey by the way i said all right, Casey, I want you to, uh, by the way, um, you know, make dinner tonight. I'll be over. And I don't tell you that I'm bringing over your most important client. And by the way, there's going to be eight key executives who have a million dollars on the table and whether or not <laughs> how, the, how the meal uh, it, it impresses them or not. Oh, and by the way, three of them have food allergies. Um, okay, you see, see yeah. wouldn't that be relevant information to have it? But instead I said, I'm going to be over for dinner. See you at six. Yeah. I'd have, I'd now have a I show up with these eight <laughs> people, a million dollars on the table. Three of them have, have food allergies uh, of, of, of which, you know, and, and then some, some of them are gluten intolerant and whatever, blah, 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 blah. And you're going, now, that's the exact same parallel. How the hell are you supposed to produce a meal? If you don't even know who and how many, what they like, what they hate, Oh, and yeah. by the way, I forgot to tell you, six of them are vegan. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Any guesses and, what and, I would have? And the, and the other two are lactose intolerant. Right. right. And so, so that pepperoni pizza that you brought. Which means you're screwed. <laughs> that, that, that million dollars is gone, buddy. Gone. Gone. Because God forbid they eat it and they're all sick right. now at your place. Right. I, I was I was thinking a couple of beers and some Chinese food, but yeah. <laughs> and I'm go. in my I'm in like sweatpants and a in a hoodie. I'm like, hey, what's up, yeah. man? Oh, yeah, yeah. hi. Hi, present, sir. Present that, low main, that low main pep, pepperoni pizza with low main just dropped all over it, right? Yeah. Ooh, yum. Ooh, sounds horrible. And some, and of course, some pineapple, of course, just to throw in a little bit of a Hawaiian edge. Right, right. So we can't just launch something, invite everyone over for dinner, and, and we'll figure it out. Like, we'll go to the market. Hey, you guys sit here. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Yeah. yeah. So if, if not that, then what, what should it be like that? That author should be, you know, taking well, I mean, well, behind I'll, I'll, them. I'll, I'll give, I'll give you a perfect example. So, yeah. I mean, so, so uh, two weeks ago I did a, uh, I did a, a, a webinar and we had about, we had about 50 entrepreneurs from around the world that, that, that came in. And I was like, I said, Hey, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, this is kind of like our holiday bash. I'm going to do seven live free brand audits. And so that means I'm spending about like five to six minutes with each. Cool. In five, in five to six minutes with each, I am actually, they are blown away. They're like, they're blown away. They're like, holy shit. How come, how, how are you able to do wow. that? What, and the thing is, what was, what was the first question that I asked for each one? I looked at it. I quickly looked at their site. I looked at it and I said, so who's your audience? 
If they said, you know, nuns who hate the colors black and white and only love and only love rainbow colors, that would be a very unique audience. That'd be good for me to know, as opposed to dudes who love NASCAR racing. Okay, so I mean, you see, that would have an impact on my yeah. ability to actually know where are we headed. So that's that's the kind of stuff. I mean, it's just shocking that that that's why it's like you've got to know it's not and i tell people freaking branding isn't lipstick it's not do i love this fucking color red or do i love this fucking color red it's like bullshit so that's why there's a naivety to it that's very unfortunate and very frustrating but it's there and so you know and so you know, and, and I'm, and I'm just at a point, I mean, having done this for, I mean, this will 2022 will be, I've been doing this for 42 years that I, I don't have the interest nor the, nor, and, and I respect my time and the other person's time enough to basically say, here's the deal. With all due respect, what you just told me is a crock of bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. Right. Right. I'm not alienating them. I'm not, not antagonizing them, but I'm saying, look, let me cut to the chase here. What you just told me is blah, 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 blah. I mean, so literally, you know, one person, right, so he's, he, in 60 seconds, he goes, um, he, as soon as the call was done, bang, he, he texts me. He goes, uh, how can we collaborate? He goes, uh, basically, how, how can I hire you? Was the actual question. And, yeah. so, and so, you know, so we had a contract on, on, on Monday because he goes, what you, what you unearthed in two minutes, I haven't been able to handle in, in, in two years. Talk me through it. I, I think I've been a recipient of all of the brand brainwashing from all these people, idiots writing these articles that I have no clue. When you told me the lipstick thing, I'm thinking this color red. I was thinking like, oh, you mentioned the nuns and the colors. And I was like, oh, is it, is it the colors? Like, and I know some planning, like who your customer is, but like, what the hell is this thing? Okay. So the thing is, so first of all, first of all, branding, as I define in my, in my book, Branding as I defined in this brand intervention brand on intervention. Amazon. Somebody, now somebody wants to just get like, what does this guy really stand for? This is what the hell I freaking stand for. Okay. This and this right there. Boom, boom, boom. So the, so the thing is, is this, so branding is the art of differentiation. Okay. Art of differentiation. So differentiation, what, what, what are we differentiating? Well, we're differentiating from all the noise out there. We are recognizing first and foremost that not, no brand exists as, as an Island. Unless you have created the first and only X, Y, Z, which is like almost never the case. Usually it's, it's an advance of something that has been there. Right. I mean, even, even Henry Ford advanced transportation, making something mechanical out of something that was previously a horse. So there was a previous version of something. There was a notion you know, even before the wheel was created, it was the idea of, oh, we moved from one location to another. So it's just like, how does one take what one is observing and actually turn it into a different and, and better and improved and simpler or more efficient or, or more enjoyable thing, right? I mean, before there, was, before there was the iPod, there was the Sony Walkman. And before the Sony Walkman, people uh, had little transistor radios, right? And so, so we have these things. And so things advance over time. Good. So there's noise out there. There's competition. There are, which means there are options. So you've got to look, what are the options? How are people solving the problem I am supposedly solving? How are they solving it today? That gets us to look outward at the macrocosm, at the bigger world out there. How are we doing it? What's the problem? Who's the audience that cares about that problem? Apple wasn't so stupid when it came out with the first iPod. This is pre-iPhone, pre-iPad, pre, you know, just around the time. So it's like it was post-iMac, the, the colorful strawberry colored iMacs and shit. Right. But, the, but, you know, but okay, you have the iPod. So, you know, and they, and they unveiled it. Well, there were already MP3 players. There were. There were several. There were yeah, about, I had some. Yeah. I think there were about four. But the thing, but the thing is, is they all sold them as a disposable commodity apple converted into a freaking experience and they and they not only presented it brilliantly and also gave it a completely different user experience but the way but their what do their ads consist of 
people dancing with colorful backgrounds, silhouettes, and all you saw was the, the iPod clipped to their belt and the, and the wire that went to, the ear, to their you know, earbuds. Okay. And then you... All right, good. So you, you had all that shit going on. Right. And then they closed it with, I think, five words. A thousand songs in your pocket with it being put in someone's back pocket of their denim jeans. A thousand songs in your pocket. Now, they weren't stupid enough to go, hey, who's our audience? Oh, you know what? Anybody with ears. Bullshit. That would have been lazy. Yeah. Lazy, lazy observation is the enemy of actual good branding. Okay. You can't be lazy. You can't go, well, who's our audience? Oh, women. Who's our audience? Men. Who's our, who's our audience? Adults. Who's our audience? Anybody with expendable income. Those are bullshit, empty answers. Those are marketing isms that come from the school of I'm a, I'm a dumb, I'm a dumb person who's been taught. I've read enough books and I can, I can rattle off the bullshit and I will. And I, and don't, don't give me the same room as them. Cause I'll say that's bullshit. Well, you just yeah, said, but, but it's scary though. It's scary to not say everybody because you kind of want everyone to buy. Cause if, if you pick yeah, the, the wrong is, person, but what, did they do? but what did they do? They looked at, they said, well, okay, let's see well, who, who is our audience. Well, there's an entire generation that actually is accustomed. They go online and they're, they're accustomed to that instant gratification. They can press play. Some of them will, will illegally download shit, but they're, they're accustomed to this instant gratification. Okay, so that's one, one world. What's another, what's another quality and another trait? They love music and they love games. They love, they love being immersed in the experience of their stuff. That's cool. They love that. They love portability, right? And they're, te- and they're hooked up technologically. Now you have an audience that actually has some shared traits, okay? And so, and the rest is history. Okay, but they, but that's just not being lazy about looking. You can't afford to be lazy. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, I make the most amazing, you know, yeah, there's the crow nut, but I've got the next most amazing, most delicious thing. It's going to be incredible. You think that was a heart attack on a thing? Mine's a, mine's a triple bypass in a freaking, in four bites. And you go, who's going to, who's going to buy it? Everyone. Everyone's got a mouth. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. Get real. So that's the thing I'm talking about. You got to you got to be real. You got to be willing to call bullshit when it's bullshit and be honest about who's your, who's your audience. I mean, who's my audience? My audience isn't everybody. Right? You know, and and you and you ask any you ask any leader, you ask anybody, any influencer that you want. You talk to Gary Vee, you talk to Grant Cardone, you talk to you talk to a Sarah Blakely, you talk to any any of these folks. And of course, do they do they have haters? Fucking A. Do they also have like loyal fans? Fucking A. If you're going to expand, you're always, there's going to always going to be a little, a little portion of those who are like, Ooh, uh, good. yeah, we, you get people wishful thinking, right? Like I, I wish my audience was X. Can you do that? Or is that not being honest? Give me more, give me more specifics on that. Um, I wish it was B2B companies, but really it's these big mid market B2B companies, but really it's these small companies with entrepreneurial CEOs that are my actual customers. Like I want it to be that, but really it's this. Well, put it this way. It may become that other thing that you want it to be, but you wanting it to be and who you, who actually is feeling the need, the pain and the, and the, and the impulse to grab your stuff. Now you need to be aware of, you need to understand that not you wouldn't, I wouldn't alienate them, but I'd make sure that they're the right fit. You know, you got to make sure they're the right fit. Are they going to be able to afford your service? Are they going to be able to pay? Um, are they going to pre- appreciate the value that you give? You know, and that and the answer is that no, no, no. And it's like, well, okay, that's not your audience either. You know, and what makes them that audience? Is it the other, the other ones are out of reach? Well, if that's the case. That's just a matter of like getting really gorilla about it and really going, how do I outsmart? How do I just like defy the system? Gotcha. So we're getting above the noise. We're getting real about our audience. We're being honest about it. We're observing. Yep. yep. And you're asking. And you're asking questions. You're asking the tough questions. What are the tough questions? <laughs> well, the tough questions. It's like, well, well, they're already buying. Blah 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 blah. Why do they need me? Right. That's right. Tough, that's a tough question. Uh, and you, and you better freaking have, figure out the answer to that. Why do they need me? I'm a nice guy. That's a shitty answer. I like it more. Um, we're the same. We're a dollar cheaper. Not that's really the, good that's answers. The worst, that's the worst thing in the world. Dollar yeah. cheaper. 
that's the worst thing in the world. You've already you've already deflated your value. Right. You should be able to, you should be be able to come on the, on the scene and charge more. A good brand could do that. Of course. Especially if you've nailed the audience and you're saying our audience is you here, this, 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 this as you, not just like you're a human on earth. And so you're our audience. No, we specifically specialize in working with exactly your fingerprint. Yeah. So then they're like, oh, well, I didn't, I, I do should go with you because you, you must have the experience of working with me in particular. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then how do we write? So, I, by the way, I liked how you said brand is the art of differentiation. Yep. Beyond the noise, beyond the competition. So we've looked, we looked at the market and the macrocosm to figure out that. And now you're bringing us by saying, "Why me?" Is that more of the microcosm of? Well, yeah, it's like special what, about what, me. Yeah. Why? Why? Why me? I mean, it's like you know, people people say, "So why? Why should? Why should I pick you?" And they say, "Well, the bottom line is, is, I'm not going to give you the bullshit." I mean, I, I li- I'll give you a perfect example. There was a there was a there was a uh, an educational organization. Um, um, I think it was out of Kentucky, and they and they, what did it rhyme with? Uh, I don't. I don't. I, I don't. <laughs> I, should, I really don't remember. I, I don't. Remember, I don't. <laughs> it's. It's. I don't know. I. I. I, I have to look it up. I had to look it up, and it was. It was. It was a long enough ago where I was like, but I remember <laughs> them calling me up and saying, you know, we've got it narrowed down. We've got it narrowed down to two to to two firms, one and yours. Okay. And, uh, and I said, and so, so, you know, so I'll, I'll walk you through what I asked them. I said, so let me ask you something. What about them interests you? Right. I didn't immediately talk about, start talking about me, but let me tell you why I'm good. That would have been a, a terrible, terrible posture, a terrible way to frame it. So I said, so I said, so what, what about them interests you? Well, they have a lot of experience in the space of, of, um, of, of working with um, educational institutions. I said, okay. And so we already know they have quite a bit of experience about it in there. I said, okay. And what, and what about me? It just, well, you're, you're, you're not like that. You're totally different. And that you, you're, you're, you're more from the outside. I said, okay. Now, just from that, here was my response. I said, well, here's the deal. If you're looking to appear like an organization, which would basically an educational organization, an educational institution, that would make you kind of look like the way educational institutions look, then I would say they're the ones to go with. You see, you see what I've done there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was just like, Essentially, if you don't want to differentiate, right. go and with I them. Said, I said, now, but if you want to be seen as a distinct, as a distinct educational institution that isn't like everybody else, that would make me the better choice. It was like, <laughs> so, do you, so you want to be a me too? Or do you want to stand out? <laughs> Anyway, they they ended up hiring me. Of course, they chose wisely. I was gonna say I was <laughs> sort of waiting to like, did they make the right call? Because yeah. uh, sometimes there's that safety, and you know, the nobody gets fired choosing IBM. You know, good. You want you want you want safety? Go go with those guys. I the, the bottom line is, I mean, that, that's just the negotiating point. You got to be willing to walk away from the table. Yeah, you have to be willing to walk away from the table. I'm very willing to walk away from the table. I, I'm 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 willing from the point that I walk into a room and I sit down or I get on a zoom call and I, and I sit down, I'm willing to like, I'm going, if I, if I start hearing and hearing a little, it's like, it doesn't sound like you're actually like very, very much wanting to do blah, 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 blah. So I, so it's, it's, I'm interviewing them as much as they think they're interviewing me hands down. And if I don't think it's a good fit, I say, you know, it's really not a good fit. How do you know it's not a good fit from your perspective? Well, because the thing is, is that if they, if they're like, if like, well, we've got a committee red big red big, big red flag i don't i don't i don't support committees because the bottom line is is committees are they're the job what's the job of a committee to have a bunch of of people with all varying experiences from someone who's been with the company for two weeks to someone who's been with the company for four decades uh and they're all given like a like a you know basically like a communist uh a vote every, every, everyone's treated equal yeah everyone's equal despite their experience despite their knowledge yeah uh, and, and so what are they going to do? So everyone's going to be given, be given an equal vote and, and they are, um, there to debate bullshit. When I, I can guarantee you, I have never, and I, and I would challenge anybody listening to this show. You give me physical hard evidence that you've ever seen this 
and I'll and I'll pay you. I'll pay you freaking hard cold. How much? I'll I'll pay you five hundred fucking dollars. Okay. Okay. <laughs> if, you, if if you've ever if you've ever actually you, and you and you have evidence, you prove it to me. And it's like I have seen I have seen two people arguing over which brand in and they're debating and they're saying why should I choose this? Well, oh, uh, why should I choose this brand of of uh, of um of instant rice? Well, I think this and da 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 and uh, like well, uh, what's your viewpoint? Well, I think that this brand of of uh, of instant rice is the one that should be done, and this is why. And they're, and they're and they're standing there for five minutes, seven minutes, ten minutes, arguing and debating and presenting their closing statements on which brand of rice or tv dinner or this and that the other it's like i'm not, I'm not saying well hey i don't like this one i'm getting it there's that fine you get that one and i'm gonna get this one fuck you i'm not saying that they're gonna have different opinions i'm saying they're gonna what happens in a in a, a committee in a room where they're together and they're you know arguing and debating and da -da 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 for hours and hours and all that kind of bullshit you will never see that in the aisle no one's gonna say hey you know what well blah blah blah, blah. and and you know that color really feels like it uh, connects with my demographic. It's like, you know, you know, these conversations don't happen in the aisle, right? All that yeah. bullshit doesn't happen in the aisle. That's my point. It's an artificial scenario, supposedly by doing deliberations and it's bullshit. So I eliminate, I eliminate the bullshit because I don't, I don't have the time or the patience for it and it's unproductive. You know, it's kind of like what it's like if you want honest answers, I know how to get honest answers from, from customers or prospective customers, but it's not going to it's rarely going to happen in, in a focus group because focus group, you have the contagion of one person says, oh, well, like this. Da, 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 da. Oh, you know what? That's a really good point. I had more yeah, that sounds it. right. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's really, really good. it's a really good. Oh, yeah. But but you're but you're a, you're but you're a man. You don't understand this for, for women. We don't like that. And, da, 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 da. and now it's like, oh, now all of a sudden we have that. We now we have the gender fight and then we have the this and then we have the that. Oh, yeah. But you're really slender. You've always been slender. Well, I've always had a high metabolism. That's why I'm not interested in this product. But me, I've always been I've always had thyroid problems. It's like, it's like yeah. those conversations don't happen. So you get art at their artificial 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 there are there are proper ways to collect that information those are not the ways what's your favorite way to collect that information what i do is one is i tell if i tell every, every one of my clients whenever we're going to reach out to anybody is you cannot you cannot say hey blah 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 and 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 present something to them some could be a concept, could be a story, could be a word, could be a name, could be a this, could be a that. Say, what do you think? I say, you ask, what do you think? You're opening the doors to hell. Well, that, remi that reminds me of a word that, that, I, that, I, that I was told when I was right before my father used to spank me. And, and so I don't like that word. It's like, what the hell does that have to do with the price of tea in China? <laughs> okay. It's like, it's like, well, you know, it's like, you know, I've read a lot of a lot of marketing books, and I have found that 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 octagons um, are, don't, don't, are are not preferred by people of this particular descent. You know, based on their ancestry lineage. Mm. You know, it's like, what are you talking about? So I, well, what do you think is bullshit? I instead will ask something like this: Say, hey, and I'll make it very specific, and it'll be on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Either ask the person, you know get jump on a quick zoom call or you send them an email and you say, Hey, if you saw this in a store, would this appeal to you? Would this attract your attention? And they say, yes. And then what do you say? Well, then you say, yes. well, what, what specifically about it? What specific thing about it resonated with you? What's the thing that it, what's the thing that connected or caught your attention? Oh, love the name or love, love, love the style. Uh, love, love the style of lettering. If it really feels, really feels antique, takes me back to my youth or, you know, or whatever. You, mean, you, know, you, never, you, know, you never quite know. Well, I mean, you, you might have a hunch. You might have a hypothesis, but until you get that direct feedback, so you don't quite know. But now, but now you've asked if you were in, you know, or, or you say, if you were traveling, you know, it's like you put them in this situation and you make it very, very, very specific. And you please make sure that they are they are actually someone that rep, that's somewhat representative of your audience that you expect to be your audience. Don't point. don't create a freaking like you know a, a, a you know a, a a like a really cool you know glow in the dark tampon and then show it to you know a dude show it well no show it show it to a to a eighty five year old male who has dementia who's in a nursing home. And, and, and then say, by the way, when, if you were in a store, um, would this appeal to you? You see how that would be problematic.
<laughs> if that guy was in World War II, he'd be like, the hell are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the face. Sorry, yeah. granddad. Sorry, granddad. Wrong. You're not the target audience. I shouldn't have asked you. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. But that, but you get, I mean, these, these little things can be, be derailed, but they're done all the time. Yeah. Does that work with B2B as well? I mean, they're not shopping in a store, but they're all the time browsing somewhere. Well, of course, yeah, they're, they're buying stuff. You always, we can't lose sight of the fact that we're always dealing with an individual at the end of the, at the end of the line, who's making a decision. And of course you got to have the right decision maker. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I, I put, I put someone through my masterclass. Um, they graduated about three months ago and he ended up, he ended up, um, you know, he's, I love, I love him like a brother. He's like, he's like my Italian, like my Italian brother. He's, he's in, he's uh, from Italy. He now works, lives and works in, in Dubai. And he was, he was looking at something in terms of how to gain access to these organizations. Well, and I said, well, who are you approaching? Well, so-and-so I say, are they a decision maker? Well, n- not exactly, but they actually, they kind of are, but they, they don't, but they have a different viewpoint. Da, 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 da. I said, well, who, who's it ultimately, who's ultimately going to really care about this? Well, the CEO, I said, so why don't you approach? So I made a recommendation into how to navigate to that person um, with a little bit of a, of an explanation of how, how to present that distinction. Yeah. Um, that would be relevant to them. That'd be a, a point of concern for them. Uh, well, since then he has closed about $41 million in, in the contracts from about four months ago. Yes. It, it, it works. So, okay. So I, I, I get a sense for what it is. I look at, you know, everyone kind of looks down at their brand, their eyes cast down because they realize maybe it's a little shitty. What do you do? You've got a brand already. You're not starting from scratch here. It is staring at you like a cute little ugly puppy that right. no one wants. And you realize that maybe it's the wrong brand or you haven't, you haven't listened up till this very moment in your lifetime. What do we do? You suck it up. Get the do hell what? over it. Get over it. Just get get over it and just go, okay. All right. If it's not, if it's not doing the job it needs to do, I mean, here's the, here's the one question I always ask people. Let me ask something. If you were starting that today with what you know today, yeah, would this be the solution? Would right. this be the brand that you would actually put out there? 90% of the time, no. They're like shit, They're like damn it, I you know, and I, right. and, I, and, I, and I normally get like I hate you. I said I know I love you too. Right. So then what do you do? You put the puppy outside, bring him to the, you bring him to the vet, no, and you go get a new one. Well, no, I mean the bottom line is, is don't you do you remember? I think I think it was, I'm not sure if it was Pizza Hut or Domino's. You remember remember when that remember when like when remember when I think it was uh, remember there was like a, a it's probably about nine years ago there was um. The, the CEO was in the, in the stores with the, with the folks who were handling, you know, preparing the stuff, putting it in a box. And I think they had something with like, like uh, something about their chicken or something like that on their pizza or something like that. And it's like, Hey, here's the deal. You know, it's like, we looked at what we were doing. We weren't satisfied with it anymore. And the bottom line is, is we, some of you told us you weren't satisfied with it either. So here's the deal. Da, da, da. Yeah, it's and Domino's. Actually, I think they did that. Was, was it Domino's? And then, they, and then they had, and then it was like on the box. It's like, you know, is this like, you know, and they had you like vote on it. Da, 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 da. And so they, they made you and me part of the journey. They included us. Yeah. Smart, good, vulnerable. Yeah. Like, if, you, if you suck, there's no, there's no downside. I mean, I think, I think there are people, oh, you know, never admit you suck. The bottom line is if you suck, you say you suck with the awareness and accountability that, you know what, I have sucked up till now. Up till now. You know? And yeah. so, and so, but that's, but that, you know, bottom line is, is, I mean, for me to say it, it wasn't there, that'd be like me being, being some, you know, hallucinatory, you know, politician who says, oh, blah, blah, you know, because politicians are, are notorious for always saying one thing when you have opposite facts. It's like, there, there's no one dead and you're looking and you're going, but there's 17 bodies right there, you know, uh, well, death is relative. <laughs> <laughs> It's, like, you know, it's, now, like, it's probably unfair to call your existing brand a puppy because it makes it hard to get rid of it. But are, are you saying though, they're like, look, change. Like if you change, whatever you got now, do the, do the better thing. Do the better thing. Look, the, like, here's the other question that, that I, that I ask. If, so, if a company's looking at like, Hey, 
take a, take a, do an audit, let us know where we're at, blah, 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 blah. And I'm, and I'm like, well, let me ask you, what's, what's the degree of name equity you have? What do I mean by name equity? Name equity means name recognition. It means do people recognize the name? Do they think it's good? Do they think it's bad? Is it neutral? A lot of people can give or take it. Some people, some people don't even call us by the right name. Some of us call us by this, blah, 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 blah. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. You need, you need to go, okay, is there anything worth saving? Is there, or is it just, you know, zero sum, man. Done. Now, what is it though, right? Because in my mind, I keep thinking of like the gap when they're terrible logo change that apparently they oh, went back. Oh, that thing that lasted for one it, week? Yeah, is it, is, it the, is it the logo, the name, the name equity? Is it the sum of all parts? What is, is the brand everything? Well, it's everything. So you got, so what, let, let's, let's look, let's look at, let's, let's look at Apple. We all know Apple. Okay. So what, what, what's the brand? Okay. The brand is what brand is no. the, 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 their logo. Yep. It's how perfectly pristine their box and packaging is. Right. It's, it's true. It's, quality, it's sexy. Quality. You pull that lid off and it's perfectly like laser perfect. aligned. It's perfect. Yes. It's a work. It's a work of architecture. Pretty good, man. Everyone else's boxes suck, right? You can't get in on them. Right. And they're That's heavy, right. and you just lift it off like it's a. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the only, the only, the only thing missing is is that when I when I when I finally pull, get the box off, that I don't hear a little a little choir going. Oh, right. I mean, you have that poof. You have the poof of the air pressure. Yeah. And, and I just need, I just need, a, just need a couple of clouds, you know, parting, and the streams of, of sunlight coming on my face. That's the only thing that's missing. But the thing is, is so we have that. We have we have the user interface. We have the aesthetic that's part of the overall brand. Brand. We have their sense of color. We have the way that they actually do product launches as part of their brand. Those are all the bits and pieces that are part of their brand. We have the legacy of Steve Jobs. We have talking the way very few people, very few uh, tech companies do talk. Um, so those, those are examples of things. Those are the, some of the various bits and pieces that actually, and we have the experience we have when we go into one of their stores, right? Now, but here's the challenge, right? If, if I've heard this before, if something's everything, it's nothing, right? If brand is everything, then it's this like cloud of nothing that you're just sort of talking to. Right, right. So what is it? Is it a cloud of nothing like, or a cloud of everything? It is everything or is it? It, a, a brand knows what the a brand is highly self aware, and that self awareness becomes when one is self aware. Let's look, let's look at this. A brand, like an individual, needs to be self aware. If someone is, if we consider someone self aware, they are also aware of what their environment. They're aware of their their role in the in the ecosystem of where, where they're playing. They're aware of the other players. Um, I wouldn't consider a great bass. I wouldn't consider Michael Jordan a great basketball player if he was only self-aware and could take a shot. No, what made him great was he was highly aware of his skills and talents and highly aware of the other players on the team, both on his own team as well as the opposing team. And he was highly aware of the audience and highly aware of the court and highly aware of what's possible and highly aware of the score. So that's awareness. Same thing happens for a brand. A great brand is going to have high self-awareness. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, like Porsche. Porsche knows its place in the world. I mean, I love, like, I mean, I, I mean, like you look at Porsche, I mean, one of their ads, I love this ad. It was like when other cars get old, it was a it was a, it was a it was a photograph of an old, of an old Porsche, and you could tell that it had been around and it kind of was it tarnished a bit, but it was still had its gorgeous lines. And it said, "When other cars get old, they end up in the in the in the crap heap in the in the scrapyard. When ours get old, right. they end up in a museum." Mm. So you see, they know they're that was self aware and aware. So self aware is not just self; it's aware of like all the various bits and pieces, all the moving parts that are part, we're part of a dialogue as a brand. So we've got to just like know where we, where we fit, where we don't fit. I mean, I don't compare myself to, to certain organizations and I don't compare myself to certain individuals. Um, sometimes I, I do on, on various things and other, other things I don't. Um, so does that answer your question? Well, I mean, is there, does that mean there's like a hierarchy or like a maturity model? Because the more the more powerful brands are aware of, multiple dimensions 
but I, are there are there some core dimensions or there's some core parts like if I, you know, if you wanted to be Apple, but like, are you starting with the logo? Are you starting with the name? No, you're, you're no, you're starting where I told you we're starting, which is like, okay, who the hell are we serving? Who you're, you start with who you're serving. Of course. I yeah. mean, the, who, that makes Kirk, sense. Who's Kirk, who's currently serving those people? What are the solutions that they're happy with? What's right. the, what's the benchmark of acceptability? Right now, once you, once you've answered those questions though, and it's time to create your own brand to answer those questions, where do you now, answer? Well, the thing is, is like, so now it's, now that we've answered that, now we, we work out, so you first work out your narrative, you work out your language, you work out what you stand for, then you go into, okay, good. Now we're going to do the same thing with the design. Okay, good. Based on what's out there. It's like, okay, what do we need to, what, you know, do we want to look like, and like, an, do we want to be another me too in the space or do we want to be different? So that's, that's another place where we get into that. Um, so Got we it. do the same differentiation drill, but the thing is, is like, look, look at this though. Why is it that Sears went out of business? Morons. Do you know that Amazon was, it was only the digital equivalent of what Sears did? Like, you know, whatever, 50, 60 years prior. Huh. What did mean? What did Sears do? Sears, Sears did what? Sears was like, okay, it was, it was at a time when there were, there were small, America was made of smaller towns. There weren't yet department stores. So you'd have a downtown, you'd have a few little shops. But if you wanted to get something that wasn't in those shops, you'd have to drive 100, 200, 300, 400 miles away. What did Sears do? Hmm. Everyone has a mailbox. What if we do this catalog? Because I don't know, the, 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 your, your people listening to this probably don't know this. But Sears catalog at one yeah. point was, was 500 pages and they even sold houses, FYI. No shit. They okay. even sold houses. Okay. So the thing is, is that, so, so literally, so what do they do? What they do is they like, well, you know what? Instead of making people go to find the shopping, let's bring the shopping to the people. So what do they do? So everyone has a mailbox. Bang. We're going to get this catalog. And that was the model. What did Amazon do? Hmm. Everyone has a desktop. Instead of making people go out to actually have to shop for this stuff, what if we actually brought the shopping experience to a desktop? Starting with books and then starting with other things, da, 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 and then now Amazon's Amazon. Same model, but because, because they were stupid and didn't, didn't follow where things were headed, they blew it. Same thing with Blockbuster. Why did Blockbuster just crumble? And why did Netflix crush it? Well, because Netflix was following where things were headed. And why did, why did, um, was, oh, Toys R Us. Are you telling me the incredible name equity of Toys R Us? Oh my gosh. They, that, they so could, incredible. that they couldn't have made, that they couldn't have made their stores a place where, hey, bring your kids, hang out, look at the stuff, take a photo, share it on social media you do that we're going to give you a credit on your next purchase they would kids would have flocked there forever and then you know and it's just like it's like like not everybody knows but double tree i mean double tree does something that any other place could could replicate but they don't cookies double tree, double tree has their freaking their warm chocolate chip cookie right yeah you know that they make eighty three thousand double chocolate chip cookies every freaking day for their guests that go into their hotels and you know what's the most talked about thing on social media is guests saying taking pictures i love my chocolate chip cookie it's free advertising let me see wow what's the investment let's see so maybe that cookie costs them six cents maybe maybe three cents and it's and then the time it takes to warm it up in a microwave so it's warm. Well, that's the thing they're warm right they're, they're not warm. cold crunchy yeah terrible you don't want, you don't want cookies cold. you don't want cold so the no. thing is but there but that but there's but there's an example i mean each of these is little points it's like come on you know it's like how do you how do you you know what there's always going to be a benchmark of okay this is this is what's acceptable well that's bare minimum that that that's bare, acceptable bench line baseline bare minimum it's bullshit that's like, right. well, our hour, our store hours say nine, open at a nine and close at five. And you know what we do? Well, <laughs> we open at nine and <laughs> we close at five, sometimes 501. 
Right. Who gives a shit? So no one, so no one's going to care that you're doing what you say you're going to do. They're going to care if you do more than what you say you're going to do, because that's where most, most companies falter. You know, that cookies is a, is a interesting point. I did the math. Let's say they did the six cents uh, per cookie, did the math. That's almost $2 million with the cookies every year. <laughs> but Hey, that's, that's way more than you're going to get doing some ad campaign. You know, the, the, Everyone knows, like you've established, this is what you, and everyone could do it. They just didn't do it. You know, real quick, you, when I was asking for different steps, you know, and I'm a caveman, I admit it, but you rattled off a couple things that sounded interesting to me. At the very beginning, you're creating something or you're, you're having an intervention. You need to fix this thing. You mentioned there's a narrative, there's a language. You're thinking about what you stand for. Is that, is that really like table stakes? You, you establish that. And from there, all your, your dreams come true. All your answers sort of come from those, those words. Well, you got it. Well, if you if, put it this way, if you don't have your differentiator actually sorted out, if you don't have that sorted out and knowing what your differentiator is, you will not be able to develop a brand story that's meaningful. You will not, you'll always be waffling going, is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Because they always have an interesting, always interesting conversations with direct response folks. Because they're, because, I mean, I respect direct response, but it's a different beast. It's completely like, okay, we're gonna drive. To, and 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 here's the thing that, that people don't understand, and this is why it gets interesting. Everyone's focused on sales. Well, there are two things that come before a sale happens. Okay, one is is well, there's this thing called marketing. Marketing's job is to get stuff out there. Well, that's the, that's your direct response stuff. That's the this, that's the that. But what is marketing talking about? Hmm. Oh, that's where branding comes in, which comes before that. So it goes branding, and then marketing, which gets the the messages and the promo promotions out and all kind of stuff. And then you harvest your sales on based on the seeds planted from what you're, the seeds you're planting, which is branding, and then how they're getting actually like you know how they're actually getting watered and, and, and fertilized and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that, those are your three components that get into it. So, you know, some people go, well, shouldn't it be this? Shouldn't it be that? Shouldn't it be that? Well, th that's just because of their own confusion. They don't understand direct response falls into the, into the promotion, into the marketing and promotion part, which is the middle ground. You still have to define what the hell your brand is. You still have to define what it is. And what, what is that narrative? Is that, is that you're telling your story, what you are? Well, it, it basically answers it basically who and what we are, why we matter, why someone should, would choose us, what we stand for, the reason, the reason we came into existence, um, the passions and stuff. And, and it's, not just a, it's not just about a transactional model with, a, you know, with something with a call to action or someone signing up. I mean, like, like because you know, pre-1996, right, pre-internet, you know, it's like people bought a particular way, right? There was this, you know, they, they had a, a need and then they, then they, and they, it was going to result in a purchase and somewhere in the middle sales was going to show up and sales is going to show them. And that tended to be shortly after the need was, the, was established. Then they get, then you run into a person, it would be a store or wherever. And you run into that and they will now, that salesperson will now, they'll show you the colors and the flavors and the sizes and the this and the that and, da, 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 and that'll be a purchase. And, and, they'll, and they'll be able to substantiate it, third party endorsements, proof of proof, you know, social proof, blah, blah, whatever. Good. Well, now post 1996, since the internet, what do we have? We actually have an actual, we have people are, are doing, they're doing, finding it all about it online. They're reading about all the reviews online. They're finding out who, who liked it. What's the service like? What works? What doesn't work? Is, is, this a, is this a shitty iteration? Is this a good iteration? Da, 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 da. All of that happens before the salesperson ever is even contacted. Right. Yeah. I mean, by the time you're doing that, it's like you're checking out at the, the register. Right. Yeah. So the thing is, is that there, there's, there's the job of branding right there. That it really does lead the way. Otherwise, you're going to just sound like everybody else or just not for me. <laughs> and then it doesn't really matter how many ads we wallop you over the head with. It just does. It doesn't it doesn't appeal to me. I wasn't interested. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, man. Well, I mean, 
how do you know all these things? My next question really is, is like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Take me back in time to like little David days. Did you know you're going to become the czar of all things brand as you grew older? Was brand kind of a thing for you when you were younger or was it no, no. a shadow at that point? No, no, I was, I was just very, I was personally just very, very interested, very, very interested in, um, I was always intrigued by things that, that, that caught my attention, you know, whether it was the newest Beatles album or whether it was a work of art in New York city where I grew up yeah, or if it was a piece of architecture that was really cool or it was a sm- an incredible smell coming from a, a restaurant that I was walking by it in New York or something, you know, so I just was fascinated by things that caught my attention. And, um, and I was ne- and I was never, I was never, uh, you know, for me, like, you know, art creation, doing things like that. I, I was always, I always enjoyed that. That was, that was, that was my, my form of expression. And Did so you have an early medium. Did you have like a, were you sketching, painting, oh, drawing? From the point I could hold a pencil, I was always drawing. Just drawing things. I, I love drawing. I love drawing, you know, and I played drums in my teens and, you know, and I, and I, I mean, I, so I, I just loved, I loved, I loved creative outlets. Um, you know, and I, and I did, I did some sculpture and I did some I did oil paintings. I did all, I did all these things. And, um, you know, I, I just, I just enjoyed that stuff that kind of just was like, I just found it entrancing, you know, that, that was the thing. I was like, Ooh, that's interesting. That's interesting stuff. You know, I always, I've always heard of, you know, when you have something like art, it's an outlet. What's the inlet? What, what feeds that? You know, in, even from an early age, you notice things that intrigued you. I was, I, I, I would, I would say I probably was not your ordinary kid. Um, Cause I remember, I, I remember when my mother had passed away, I was the executor of her, of her, um, you know, for the will and everything. And so, what ended up happening was we're going through all these various things. And how old were you? How old was that when she passed away? Yeah. Um, let's see here. So I would have been, I would have been about 36. Yeah. Okay. And so, and so what happens is going through various things. And there's this one little piece of paper, this little note. And I think it said something along the lines of, there's a little note that my mother had made for herself. And, and I must've been like five years old, six years old. And, she, and my mother was carrying me to bed. I might've, I probably fell asleep on the couch. And so she was just like, so, so she was carrying me to bed. And as she was carrying me to, to bed, um, I looked up my eyes open and I, I noticed a little pattern from the lights from the from from illumination coming from the outside and it was a pattern made because it was light coming in through the window and it kind of made a little pattern on the on the ceiling and I looked up I probably was about maybe probably must have been five or six something like that I looked at and I said what a pretty design that is and I just fell back to sleep and wow. she made this she made this little note. She made this little note. He just took little David to, to, to bed. And he, he just he just had, I think she I think he just had his fifth or sixth birthday. And when I was carrying the bed, he just opened his eyes. He looked up at the ceiling. He said, What a pretty little design that is. And then fell back to sleep. So that was me. So that's me. That's that's so that's me. So that's the thing is like, so I just did I admire, I admire things. I admire shapes and colors and and uh and things of that nature so so all that admiration comes in and then then you sort of process that out through the drawing and doodling and yep yeah did you and and did you ever have a a medium you didn't like A, a medium that i didn't like yeah um well i wasn't a big fan of acrylics because they dry too dry too fast dry too fast I like I liked I liked oil paintings. I didn't I didn't like how long oil paint oils could be like wet for like two days. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. 
Yeah, yeah, they could be. I mean, it, it, it's like they really could stay, still stay wet for like two days until they like finally cured. Does that mean and, you can sort of fix them too, or like change yeah, you them? Can, you can kind of, yeah. I, I, I would, I would, I would noodle. You know, so I'd be like, oh, I'd like that, I'd like that. Oh, and then I'd be, I'd be oh, okay, I want, you know, because I'd look at it and I'd step back and I'd like, oh, and I'd make little little <laughs> modifications. And so, but but you know, acrylic would be like because it's basically it's, it's plastic. You know, mm. so it's, it's, you know, so basically would it, it can harden, I think in 15, 20, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. And so I'm like, yeah. damn, if I don't like it, then I got to kind of scrape it off and redo it. So I, I didn't, didn't like acrylic much as a, as a medium. Yeah. I just did a, a painting date night thing when it had acrylic and I'm not very good at it, but the more of these things I do, I realize, eh not bad but i noticed we had to put snow on the tree and my, the first time i did it i was like this this can't be accurate this this can't right. equal snow on a tree right but i had patience for it right and the other one i had no patience i'm like god there's so much freaking snow on this tree like, and when i look at both trees the one that i thought would be complete bullshit actually looks like a tree with snow on it <laughs> and then and i just sort of but the one that with the one where I was like, oh, that I don't even know. And that one looks kind of terrible. It just oh, oh, there was, how that, that there happens. Was, there was a painting. There was a painting. I forget which I forget which which um, might have been the Museum of Art, my Museum of Modern Art in New York. But I remember there's a painting and I remember approaching it because at about 12 feet away, you look at it and you go, wow, what an amazing painting of a, of a dollar bill. And it was and it was not a big piece. It was like maybe about like let's say it was by 12 inches by, by eight, eight inches, something like that, kind of pretty small. And so I remember like that. And then as I approached it and approached it and approached it, it was just globs of, if you stood, if I showed it to you right now and had you look at it like 12 inches from your face, you'd go, what the hell is that? I mean, honestly, it was just like, it was, you could tell he just like took these, like this brush or these uh, just like dabs. It was like dabs and, and da, 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 da. you step away. 12 feet it was the perfect painting of a, of a dollar bill wow. it was like flawless but it was like you're going and you're like how how he did this no clue i was clueless but i always found it fascinating so i, I always loved i always loved i always loved anything that took me down a little path and then i was like oh wow right where i was like my i didn't see it i didn't quite see it coming or it shifted my my how i saw the world or how i was perceiving things i always had great admiration for that sometimes they have those paintings where they paint them upside down and then they flip them around yeah those are interesting those are interesting i mean those those, those are interesting i mean it's a little it's a little more performance art kind I of mean, a gimmick yeah I, I, kind of performance. I, I, I admire i admire what they're doing they obviously know where the hell they're going um you know they've done it it's it, it looks to me they're like okay you've done this 75 150 times <laughs> You know, I mean, it, it's impressive to watch, um, but, you know, but I mean, I, I like stuff that, that feels brilliant and, and ingenious with that, without any little crutch of, of gimmick, gimmick tree. You know, I don't, I, don't I, I really admire that. You know, I had, have you had a chance to go to Paris, any of the museums over there and the artwork? Um, there's one that's in a it's not it's not the main not the louvre it's one that's in like a train station near it uh is actually my favorite and i had a chance to sit in there uh and actually sit and watch as people would look at a monet mm. and i almost felt like them looking at it was part of the art for me because they're all just international I had all different kinds of people coming in and some are quick and some are not and i just and i found it fascinating uh, to, to look at that and that but then you're right though up close you're like oh what is this it's just a couple streaks on a paper with some color on it but you're right you just take a step back and it wow it's a farmhouse it's a it's a hay field it's something yeah. it's crazy yeah exactly exactly so i have a hypothetical question for you okay i may or may not have a time machine here in new hampshire and let's say i do because i might it's in the backyard under a tarp you come visit We'll get some beers, some lobster, have a good time. And you get to use this time machine and go back in time. But it's in particular kind of machine where you go back in time and you get to meet yourself. But you meet yourself a few days after graduating from school or after sort of that college life is done, right? That 
that uh, the graphic design school. So a few days after that, you get to meet yourself and you can tell yourself anything and it won't disrupt the time continuum. It'll be okay. What kind of things would you tell yourself? Would you give yourself advice, recommendations, thoughts, ideas? Um, absolutely. I, I, I would probably, I would, I would, I would, I would approach myself after completing, uh, after getting my associate in arts degree. Actually, I would do it before. I would do, I would do, I would, I would do it. I would do it before that because I was, I was basically, I, I spent a year kind of like determining what I was going to do for, with my life, my career or, or not or whatever. Right. I didn't, I didn't have any big grandiose plan as far as a career. Um, and I would, I would just say, here's the deal. Um, you're going to be all right. You're going to end up with the best wife in the world. Chicks you've been spending some time with. You lack some judgment. Here's a few. Here's a here's a couple of books to 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 read. I'll actually help you help you make better decisions, and uh, and um, and just just be be at least as interested in the in 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 others as as and their and their objectives in business as you are. With your objectives in business and that will go a long 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 way and trust me that i'm not giving you a bum steer and that's that's the word oh i gotta go now ciao dude <laughs> <laughs> and then you disappear into the time continuum yeah, yeah. Rr, rr. right what what would be one of those books you would have given yourself um Basically, I mean, there's there's some amazing books that I have that I have uh, really really appreciated. Um, that, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, there's there's one that I I personally love. I mean, it's called Science of Survival. It's a it's an amazing book. It actually it actually goes over people, you know, and it goes over. It really is probably one of the most insightful books I've ever read. It's a very wow. very very insightful book, and it really is really is great, and uh, and just really explains really explains um it shows you how not all not, not all things are equal not all point not all not all um it really helps one distinguish between words versus deeds i think that's a really important distinction that too few people understand it, people i think today are listening you know to words way too much i mean to the point you know i mean like an example being all of this i mean i, I can't believe when i hear these crazy things of like you know, people wanting to uh, uh, eliminate pronouns like he, she, and stuff like this. I'm like, are you crazy? Uh, you know, guy's a guy, girl's a girl. There's nothing good or bad or right or wrong about that. That's just what they are. You know, so I mean, these these things, people are like, uh, oh, we can, I mean, oh, perfect. Like example. weaponize. They like weaponize words, right? Try to use them well, against each other. And I, I called up, I called up, I called up a a a company because my wife was having uh, some technical problems with her with uh, her phone setting it up. And she literally had spent like two hours on the phone with us. And I was like, I was like, okay, let, let me, let me get, I'm going to, I'm going to jump in and give you a hand here. So I call up, I call up this tech technical support. I say, hi, uh, my wife has been on the phone for on and off for in excess of two hours. And I need some help with regard to something. I need to speak to a senior, a senior technician who really knows her stuff. And you know what this person said to me? I'm sorry, we don't use the words senior or junior here. Uh, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, well, I want someone with a, a lot of experience. And she goes, well, I can have a manager call you back. <laughs> hey, that's the same thing. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. I say the difference between words and deeds. We've got to get the difference down. It's like, look, if someone does well, I may not, ingre may not agree with their style. You know, I may not agree. Like, okay, I may have done it a little differently. That's okay. But if the outcome is good and positive, and they've created more space, they've created more opportunity, they've created more more benefit, they've made things, they've improved things and stuff like that. That's a deed. I will I will sooner back up someone who by their deeds has done well than by someone who talks a good game but does jack shit. And that's how you know it. Your brand intervention is something to be proud of when the person talking about brand is 
is saying that words are great, but we need the actions to, to match them. Yeah. I mean, that's why that person who wrote said, yeah, I'm a brand expert. And by the way, just do this little stuff, this little bandaid stuff, and then work out who your audience is and then work out what your product really is, the value that it's bringing. It's like, how the hell, what, how are you designing for anything like that? If you don't even know who you're serving and what the hell it's supposed to be doing. Are you, are you like, are you like true? Are you a moron or is this just like a temporary drop in IQ? Okay. But just right. give me, let, let me know which one of those it is. Yeah. That publication, they may need to check their, their, their HVAC. Maybe the oxygen level is a little depleted. We've got some, <laughs> some hypoxia going on in, in their offices or something. Um, David, this is, this is fantastic. Where can people reach out to you, connect with you, your company? Maybe they need a brand intervention. What do we do? 100%. Well, so first of all, so the first thing is I certainly, if they have not, they haven't visited my site, I've got over 300 articles and these are not like, these are not like academic. No, these are like, I show you, I show you befores and afters and actual practical examples. Anyway, risingabovethenoise.com, R-I-S-I-N-G, risingabovethenoise.com. You can also check me out on YouTube. You can check me out on Instagram. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. I was, uh, so LinkedIn, you could certainly reach out to me on LinkedIn. I was, was just nominated um, for 2021. One, uh, I, I, I made it to the 50 most impactful people on LinkedIn for 2021. Jeez. So I was uh, nominated for that. And that was a real honor. Um, but yeah, LinkedIn, I spend an awful lot of time with and, uh, and really share a lot of stuff. And, and there are other, other channels that, you know, there, you know, dabble in TikTok a little bit. Da, 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 da. And I'm just kind of like seeing if that's a place where that doesn't make sense for me to, to exist. But basically rising above the noise.com. And if anybody listening to this likes what they heard, get this freaking book. It will, yeah, it will yeah. make and change your 2022 and your 2023, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. So anyway, this Damon John, my man, he wrote, he wrote the actual forward to it. Hey, small yep. world. Yep. And so, uh, and so, but there's that. Oh, and, and in case anybody is, is like, yeah, yeah, it all sounds good. Blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I didn't know this until this happened, but you see this book, this book by, so Reed Hastings, the CEO of Netflix, he had, came with his book. It became a New York Times bestseller, I think within weeks. Instantly. Anyway, instantly. And so the thing that happened was someone that I knew emailed me and said, David, it's so honored to see that you, you're in the Netflix book. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, I, it was not, a, I was so busy. I was not on my radar. I didn't know about the, the Netflix book. He goes, I said, what, what are you talking about? Well, what book? I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking Netflix book. Is it, is it maybe, is it something? I really had no clue. I was making up what possible things it could be. Yeah, so then I yeah. started looking up and I'm going, oh shit, there's a Netflix book. Well, interestingly, so on page 14 of the introduction, it talks about you have to connect the dots differently. And it talks about, it talks about Steve Jobs, you know, that you can't connect the dots looking forward da, 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 da. and then, and then it goes into Richard Branson and his mantra of ABCD, always be connecting the dots. And then there's a, then it continues and David Breyer and fast company released a fascinating video that claims the way we connect life's dots defines how we see reality and thus how we make decisions and reach conclusions. So there I am with two billionaires, Steve Jobs. Richard Branson and myself. And so that is like, so if you needed any evidence that, that I am legit, if that doesn't do it for you. Well, that just speaks to Netflix. It, I, actually hold up that book again, just so we, for the people listening, we can, the title of that book is what? No rules, rules, no rules, rules. So that sounds like a, a that's a great, uh, look, you've already proven it to me over the last hour and change that, that, you know, you are someone to learn from in this brand world and, and your articles and all that. So yeah, thank you for holding up. So, so yeah, now people can go check that out, but really to have you in a list of that kind of people, that's got to feel great. That's that got to feel amazing. That was amazing. That was amazing. And, uh, and, and, oh, and I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. And also in, in, in 2020, I put together, I put together a, uh, I spent nine months even while, while still servicing clients. Um, I spent nine months putting together a masterclass, a nine week masterclass. Yeah. The masterclass. Yeah. The masterclass mentorship program. And it's literally nine weeks. You like you're working, I'm working directly with you 
And, and for those that want to uh, really change how they do business in the world and it will, what it does, because it's so personal to you, it actually finds and isolates the weak point undermining your brand. For some, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be lots of parts to their brand. For others, it might be their, their name. For others, it might be their positioning. For others, it might be, might be how they negotiate. For others, it might be, I mean, I literally have had people complete the program and now they can raise their prices and put, have a client waiting list, you know, and, and others like a, we had five people from a, from a $3.5 billion publicly traded company, their earnings in the next quarter were like, and, uh, and that was just from five people. These are not even sea level. These are like in the, in the trenches, but it gave them enough of an outside perspective um, that it just changed how they do business. I mean, so we've, we've, we put, I put 66 entrepreneurs through that and they've already generated an excess of $71 million in new sales. So, you know, so the thing is, is that, you know, anyone listening to this, they're kind of like, holy shit, that would be something to lean into. And I would just say, you know, freaking, you know, reach out to me, DM me. Um, and so I'll, I'll, and I, and I vet, I vet people, not everybody gets in. Not I have everybody. a link for that. Is that this, do you want people to go to that as well? Or do you want them to DM you to? I'll, what I, what I'll do, what I'll do is I will, I'll get, I will get you a link. I'll get you a link that you can, that you can add to this. Okay. We'll put it in the show notes for people yep. to just click right on through. Okay. Yeah. Great. Cause I mean, that even sounds interesting to me and the idea of, you know, really you go and do it right, you know, but that's inspiring too, to have a brand that you can be proud of that really. 100%. Well, it's above the noise. I mean, well, the bottom line is, is like, look, I mean, I, you know, I mean, it's fascinating to me because, because some people be like, well, you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're trying to, they're either apologizing for the thing or they're being too low key or they're being this and being that. And wherever they are, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll tackle them wherever they, wherever they have landed. Um, you know, and there, and some of them I'll go, okay, I'm giving you a personal assignment besides the, the program. You know, I'll be like, okay, here's the deal. Oh, Casey, you just said, blah, 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 blah. Here's what I want you to do, Casey. And I'll say, boom, 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 boom. And it's like something very simple, very specific, but it's completely catered to you. Jeez. I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you juggle all these things, but, uh, but thank you so much for while juggling, <laughs> things are still in the air coming on here and just schooling me for a bit and everyone else that's listening. And man, I mean, thank you so much. 100 percent, totally my pleasure totally totally my pleasure no question for those listening if you learned something and i freaking know you did because i literally have two pages of notes over here and i actually ran out of space so i had to draw on the margins uh if you learn something then share this episode with someone else that's how you're a thought leader to one person eight people 390 who cares just get this information use it yourself get the book brand intervention and then share this with other people um uh, Man, what a good time. I got to go over these notes. I got to go re-listen to the show. I can't wait to just put all these things in action. Thanks again, man. I appreciate it. Totally, man. Thank you so much. Great questions. Great conversation. And uh, yeah, and this is, uh, this is like, pff, just use, it, use any piece of this and it will absolutely help dramatically impact anybody's, anybody's impact, their influence, their, their, and what they should be doing. I mean, small games are for, are for, Buttheads. Bullshit. Chumps. Chumps. Why, why play a small freaking game? Why? Yeah. Who the hell decided? Who, here's my final question for anyone listening. Who the hell decided you should be playing a small game? Whoever that was, give it back to them. That's bullshit. You weren't put here to freaking play a small game. Play a bigger game. Have the impact that you truly can have because you should. You deserve it. The world deserves you. That's my closing statement. There it is. There it is. It's been another amazing episode of the Hardcore Marketing Show. We will catch you all next time.